Welcome to your Super Motocross Insider post-race show from round one of the Pro Motocross Championship, all part of the Super Motocross World Championship for 2023. Jason Wygant, James Stewart, and Jason Thomas here from Fox Raceway at Palo. Let's go right to the highlights here. Starting with our 250 class, this was considered the class of depth. It's a real focused field at the top of the 450 division, but Hunter Lawrence is probably the odds-on 250 favorite coming in. Don't forget about Justin Cooper, though. Yeah, you had those two. Hunter Lawrence, Justin Cooper has been off for a while. He's been training, so he's been preparing for this for a couple months. And you know what? He comes out and kind of lays an egg a little bit. You know, obviously he has a rebound, which we'll get into that. But it was Art. It was actually Jaleet Swole, his teammate, out front. And then you had uh, Joe Shimoda making a pass. But then it was RJ making his way up as well. But yeah, it was good to see Jaleet back, and it was good to see Far East Coast Joe Shimoda out front. And then next thing you know, um, the action really starts happening, Jason. Yeah, Hayden Deegan wants to get in this battle as well, but he goes down, battling it out with Jet Reynolds. Yeah, just trying to be, be aggressive the first lap. He's still a little wet out there. And I actually might pay him the way he rode that second moto. We'll, we'll see, but you should watch an RJ come past, make the move on Joe Shimoto, and it was weird. We saw Joe kind of pull away from him, and then RJ closed up the gap, and he was able to get around. And then next thing you know, Jaleek, uh, yeah. welcome back. And then he gets a, he wanted to go sign some autographs. That's what we wanted oh, to okay. say. Um, but he, the fence. he was able to, to get up. It looked pretty scary for a while, but he was able to get back up and, and ride off, uh, which bowls well for him. But yeah, it was um, it yeah, was he good. He rode Moto 2 as well, yep. Yeah. So Hampshire's in the lead, you think he's good now, but yeah. nope. Nope, and we saw this mistakes from a lot of guys up there. Luckily for him, he actually was like the um, 405, just stopped the traffic, and Joe couldn't get around. And then um, and Joe Shimoda makes a mistake, gets cross a little wet right there, and goes down. And it's kind of his day. Yeah, it was an up and down day for Shimoda, literally and figuratively. Then Hunter Lawrence finally on the scene. He and Cooper, not the starts they wanted. He blasts around Cooper here. Yeah, for all the NASCAR fans, that was a turn four pass on the outside. And a lot of his passes was when the guys were just throwing down the inside, blocking it. He just went around the outside. And that um, it was it was good. So here's another one around Far East Coast. Yeah. There he makes <laughs> another pass. And he had the uh, tell him, um, Max Volan. Max Volan yeah. in front of him, but these guys are all chasing RJ. Yeah, to Max Volan able to hold off Lawrence, but RJ Hampshire, great job to win the very first moto of the season. And there you see the gap. Volan to cross in second with Lawrence in tow. But the problem for Volan and Hampshire, they're not able to replicate those starts in moto number two. And that's the way you got to do it in the Pro Motocross Championship. You got to do it two times. Not a great start for either, but a great one here for Hunter. Well, just like his brother in the other class, he was able to get the whole shot. And I think with Hunter, the way he rode that first motor, he started coming back on. And then once he was out front, he never really looked back. He had Tom Dial in second. But as we see, we have um, when you don't get the jump, you have these issues. And that's what happened to RJ. But that was the first of many, it seemed like, for him. Yeah, there's another one. This is also on lap one. So that's two crashes on the first lap for our first moto winner. No crashes for Hayden Deegan this time. He was very good as you see Lawrence out front. Hayden Deegan is lurking in the back and he would battle it out with the Tom Vial. Yeah, Tom number two spot. Tom Vial was riding really, uh, really good all race long. He was able to hold off, but Hayden Deegan goes around the outside of him and, and look, the kid was riding good. He rode good that first moto, but I think the confidence and how he's been progressing all year long, he was able to, to keep that pass. And look, Max Bolin was coming up. He got caught out with a laugher. I don't know what was going on there, but it was kind of on him. The laugher installed out in front of him. He goes down, and his race was done right there. Yeah, that might have cost him a shot at the podium. Here is Hampshire on the comeback trail, and then he goes down again. Yeah, we're not showing. We, these are different crashes. This is third yes. one. And and at this point, he was actually in a, a position to make the podium. So once he goes down, that's kind of over, right? And then, look, Justin Cooper is in a position to make one, and he was trying his best to get around. Um, Tom Vial kind of falls over, and then RJ Hampshire never gives up, right? Yeah, we did not think Hampshire shot at the podium, but he does this. He passes Chance Hymas on the last lap for 11th, and somehow the math turns out that one 11 moto scores would make him third overall in the day, but there was simply no touching Hunter Lawrence, who leads every lap, takes a second moto win, and three one scores make him the overall winner. That's one half of a Lawrence brother sweep. Spoiler alert, you're gonna hear more about the Lawrence brothers 
as this show goes on. Look at that, Hayden Deegan, second overall. Yeah, no, Hayden wrote really good, and it was cool. We, we got to hear from his dad, uh, Brian. But yeah, RJ Hampshire, like, never gives up, which is typical RJ. First, wins the first motor, going away, falls three times, still ends up on a podium. But sh shout out to Tom Vial. Um, you know, love what I saw from him. And even Justin Cooper coming back after that first moto, even though it was only one position um, four, he looked a lot better, Jason, after that. He did look a lot faster for fifth. Boland ends up sixth. Okay, let's hear from our race winner, Hunter Lawrence, who's with Jason Thomas. Well, Hunter Lawrence, that was a nice second moto. You get the overall win, and I think that's exactly how you would have drawn it up coming in here today. Yeah. Yeah, the start was crucial, man. I had a massive crash Monday, and we could barely ride pressed out in three laps, and I was too, in too much pain. So this one goes out to Dr. G. He's got uh, magic hands, and he's taking care of me. So, G, this one, this one's for you, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're a massive asset to our team. Congratulations on an opening win. Well, Hunter does his job. He was probably the prohibitive favorite coming into the season, and he ends up with a moto win uh, and an overall win also with that. So, James, we did see signs from others. If Hunter wins it like, oh, man, he's going to roll all year, do you think these other guys have more of the tank? Yeah, I, honestly, I look at that top seven, top ten. Each one of those guys, um, with Justin Cooper having a bounce back or out that second moto, I would say – Everybody kind of did what they thought, like I said earlier. Like, they needed to kind of make some statements, whether it was a win or not, podium. I think everyone comes out of this feeling pretty good. I mean, of course, if I'm Hunter Lawrence, I just replicated what just happened in Supercross. I'm the best. Um, but Justin Cooper looked better. Um, RJ Hampshire looks like he's in fit. The bike looks pretty well. And Tom Vial, um, so along with Hayden Deegan, I think it's going to be good for the um, rest of the year, and these guys will continue to grow. Yeah, between Shimoda and Voland and Cooper and Vial and Deegan, I mean, <laughs> so many riders have got to think as we go to Hangtown next week, they've got a shot to beat Hunter Lawrence. And uh, one guy's proud even with a second-place finish, and that would be Hayden Deegan's dad, Brian. Proud of his kid. Let's send it down to JT with Brian. Brian Deegan, you are a legend in your own right, but this time we're going to talk about your son who rode incredibly well today. I mean, this is what his third pro national. He comes out of here with a podium. And, and what I noticed most was the improvement over last time we saw him here in September. Yeah, you know, it's coming from last year was, uh, was a rough start. But it was the outdoors was just throwing him in to get some experience last year. The last two rounds, it was early. Uh, we knew he wasn't totally ready for it. It was just to get a feel. So when he came here this year, he was already ready for it. And I think it paid off. You know, so far, our little strategies have been paying off. And I kind of, you know, I expected a few times for us to bite us in the butt. But uh, we put a lot of faith in Hayden's ability and, and his hard work. And, and it really just seems to, to be paying off, you know. It's been, a, it's been an awesome ride so far. Well, congratulations. You have so many accolades in your own career. But I think it's a, a little bit of a different thing and a different pride when it's your son and not you. Oh, absolutely. Hey, it's hard to explain the the. Uh, the how happy you are to see your kids succeed at their goals and, and Hayden works so hard and uh it's just cool to see as you know as a dad and you know my wife Marisa we're just so excited like we're on the sidelines like full screaming and I love it because we put ourselves in this position to enjoy these moments and in these memories and Hayden's just rising to the occasion and he's just grinding 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 I just am so excited what the future holds and all the fans that support us it's just it's just been a cool ride so far Congratulations, proud dad. Thank you. Teams packing up and headed up the road to Hangtown, about six hours north outside of Sacramento, California. See some fans still looking for their opportunity to get some autograph or maybe even some discarded parts off the race bikes. That's kind of tradition in these motocross pits. So that's our 250 class. Let's show you the highlights now of the 450 division from Fox Raceway. Well, Chase Sexton comes in having narrowly just lost this title last year to Eli Tomac. But Tomac is not here this summer due to injury. But there is a new challenger in this division, and that is the two-time 250 champ, Chet Lawrence, who is now a full-time 450 rider starting, well, today. And speaking of starting, pretty good for Chet. And Jet, he winning everything. He, he was fastest in practice, nails his whole shot. And Chase Sexton, I just won the Supercross title. This is my class. Eli Tomac's out, so it's for me. To, it's time for me to take the reins. And man, this pesky rookie comes out here and uh, dominates, and, and, and it looked good. And AP, man, he's. I don't know if they give out the RC Hard Charger Award much, but it seems like he was behind <laughs> his teammate and behind Dylan all day. And he just kept making mistakes. He seemed pretty quick. But overall, this, this kid was just on another level. Yeah, so this is the smooth style of Jet Lawrence, long gone out front. 
And then the other guys, they were battling hard. Now watch Sexton here. Plessinger gets close and goes down. Yeah, it seemed like that was a uh, story of AP's day. Just close, but not close enough. He's making a mistake. You got to give him credit. He was trying. And then, look, he gets around Cooper Webb, trying to make another move by him. And he's coming up close enough on uh, Dylan Ferrandez. And then he's going down the hill, as we'll see in a moment, and falls over again. So it, it was a tough position, but both those passes, he was closing in on the person in front of him and just makes another mistake. Yep, two crashes for him that knock him off the podium. No trouble for Lawrence, who takes the win in his first 450 race in this series. Not a bad way to debut. Now Sexton would put it together in the second half of that Moto Rally for second. We wanted to see a battle of the teammates in Moto2, and we got it. Another whole shot for Lawrence. Miranda starts in second, Sexton quickly around, and really the whole story was Lawrence versus Sexton. Yeah, we didn't show you the replay of the first moto, the whole shot. It looked exactly the same, but both these guys was right here. Chase Sexton, um, you know, right now Dylan Ferrandez is up here, but Chase Sexton makes his way around Dylan, and then the race was on. Battle of teammates, and then Jason, it was a big, it was a chess match at this point. Yeah, they stayed within about a second and a half the entire way. So fun to watch. Yeah, it was great. It was great to watch the guys, you know, battling each other just mentally as Jet makes a mistake right here. He actually makes another one. He loses the front end, almost goes down, but Chase couldn't capitalize. He would get close, but not close enough. And Jet was just putting his spot. Just take a little pit stop right there. Um, but then Chase makes a little mistake, and then he loses a little bit of time. Jet would just rode awesome. Yep, Sexton kept the heat on the whole way, but could not figure out a way to get around or show Lawrence a wheel. This is coming down to the stripe. That's how close it was. But Jet Lawrence is going to do it. Fastest qualifier, two whole shots, and 1-1 one, one Moto scores in his 450 debut. And now he finally lets the celebration out as he comes across the line. Ferrandez, welcome back to racing after a lot of time missed during Monster Energy Supercross would end up third overall, but a pretty dis far distance back. But the Yamaha team really expected that today. They were just hoping for a podium, and it'll get faster as the year goes on. Here's Jason Thomas with Jet Lawrence. Jet Lawrence, you get the win. The undefeated streak stays intact. Tell us your thoughts after your first 450 race and also first 450 win. Oh, uh, it's... um. It's awesome, man. I mean, it's I can finally smile today. I've been trying to stay serious and got get uh, too excited with the emotions coming over, but um, now I can finally smile and kind of let loose. Um, that one there was a lot harder than the second one. Every time I just like I, I couldn't hear him. I would look back and I'm like, dude, I'd still see the red bike. So I had to keep on going. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was like a chess game. When to like see kind of go, like see if I, if I sprint now or waited off so um it was fun i mean it was it was cool to the both honda boys up there uh similar to last year one two so i mean that's awesome for honda um no it's, it's good to keep that undefeated going uh, hopefully we can keep this side uh, going on for next year also and see how long we can hold it off yes yeah, an interesting dynamic obviously you're battling your teammate here at the opening round and many of us have thought this would be the championship fight between you two but that's the first time you guys have really gone at it we're kind of sussing each other out trying to feel each other out i know sexton was probably sizing you up from behind you as well yeah, I think um, I definitely think there's more to come from Chase. I uh, obviously had that bit of a crash in the early practice, so he wrung his head a bit. But uh, no, it's going to be a war this uh, outdoor season. I know there's going to be times where it's going to be vice versa. I'm going to be behind Chase. And I'm going to be like, damn, I just can't get around him. So um, it's uh, it's going to be an awesome uh, awesome season, and I, I can't wait to. And it's going to be fun because I get to race against my teammates. So that's all awesome. Congratulations. Well, Honda owns Fox Raceway. They were 1-2 in both classes last year. This year, they sweep it with the Lawrence brothers. So it's a uh, ride red right now, James. But the Sexton challenge, I think we needed that in Moto2 because Moto1, I was like, this could be a long summer for everybody. Sexton did respond a bit. Yeah, I mean, Chase, he rode good. I mean, that second half of that first Moto, he was starting to ride good. And, you know, looking forward to Hangtown, I, we'll, we'll see. I think the track, it played again. Like, Jet's real technical on this. So it, it played for him, both of these guys. But... A little bit faster, different uh, uh, circumstance next weekend. And we'll just find out if Chase, he probably needs to stop that train. Otherwise, it might be a long summer for him. Oh, good point. Now, look, even when the Lawrence brothers are done with their domination, Honda has even more riders on the come up. Chance Hymas, a rookie, a really good run today as well. Jason Thomas in the pits with his coach, who also helps out with the Lawrence brothers here and there, Michael Byrne. Michael Byrne, longtime friend of mine, former teammate of mine, and nowadays you are helping a lot of things that go on here at Honda HRC and at the Lawrence Compound. Chance Hymas makes his second race today. 
obviously the Lawrence brothers had a dream day. Walk us through your perspective, but you're so close to these things, and I think you have so much more insight than most do. Yeah, obviously I get to see a lot, you know, my day-to-day -day, uh, duties back at the at the compound with helping all the guys and making sure the tracks are good and just working with Dazzy. And uh, obviously the main the main goal is, you know, to help Chance be, uh, you know, to be the best he can be. And, um, yeah, there's a few different hats going on, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a great group of people. Um, everyone works really well together, and... Uh, um, I think that shows. Yeah, and one of the things I noticed watching Hymas today was he had grown a lot, right? He is starting to mature, and he's, I think he's learning not only from you, but learning from the Lawrences ahead of him and just trying to do what they do. And I think that's a, a big, you know, thank you to you as well. You can kind of see that. But what, what would you really point to as like, okay, this is where you are. This is where you need to be, like the little things that, you know, can improve him and get him into that top five. Yeah, I mean, obviously the little things today was uh, the first motor was the bad start, and then he had a tip over. Um, second motor uh, had a great first lap. I think he went from like 10th to 4th, um, which was, you know, a huge feather in his cap. That's not easy to do out there with these guys, and uh, especially being essentially a rookie, you know. Um, but then he had a tip over like at about the 20-minute mark. So uh, there's, a, there's definitely some things to clean up. Um, but like you said, you know, having, having Jet and Hunter to – and just the whole crew um, to learn from and to try and uh, put put different pieces of the puzzle together and just help him progress quicker. It's a, uh, it's a good situation. Well, congrats. Keep working. Next week's a new week. Yeah, thank you. It is a new week, but throughout that week, we'll give you plenty of other coverage, analysis, insight after this. There's a Title 24 podcast. Ryan Villapoto and Ricky Carmichael break it down on YouTube every week. Bubba's World, James Stewart? I don't even know who that guy is. Okay. All right. I know who he is. Pretty good show. I yeah, listen to it. You want to go and they find some stuff out, just go to that I, from what I hear. I yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just rumor, man. Uh, and uh, Thursday's SMX Insider, that's myself, Jason Thomas, and our stat man, Clinton Fowler, breaking down and previewing, previewing you for our next race, which will be at Hangtown in Northern California. Uh, James, how different is Hangtown from this? They're both California tracks. Is it a lot different, or is it like, eh, what we saw here, we're going to see again? Well, I mean, we might end up seeing the same results, but it, as far as track, it's completely different. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. It's a little bit harder. And usually when I raced, Hangtown was one of the first stops, and I always dealt with the arm pump. But it's just a different, like, you know, faster pace, a little bit more choppier. So, you know, it's almost for Jet Lawrence, it's complete opposite of the way this track was. Real technical, flowing around. Hangtown's fast. So um, I, I feel like maybe that's going to help Chase a little bit more uh, than Jet. But w that's why we go racing. We have to find out. That's right. And uh, other riders like Dylan Ferrandez, Cooper Webb, they admitted that they were not in 100% form at round one. They're hoping to get better as the year goes on. Let's get one more thought from the paddock and JT. So after round one, we look to round two, and it seems like it's going to be as advertised. The 250 class is wide open. Even with the Hunter Lawrence win today, you can see the parity, the depth of the field. And if you get a good start in the class, you're going to do well. Hayden Deegan has emerged as an unlikely championship candidate, but that 250 class is going to keep us entertained all year long. The 450 class could easily turn into a two-horse race, though. Chase Sexton and Jet Lawrence were 44 seconds ahead of the field in Moto2, and it looks like we're going to go out of that. Now, I don't have a bet as to who's going to come out of that championship. I hope we get a title fight just like we did between Eli Tomek and Chase Sexton last year. But one thing's for sure, those two are at their best. They're going to entertain us all summer long, and hopefully we're going to get a title fight all the way to the finale at Ironman. All right. Well, the second step of that after round one here is going to be hanged out next week. Race Day Live, that's our qualifying show, starts at 1 p.m. And then Pro Motocross Championship Motos, that's a four and a half hour show, including our halftime show. It'll be all on Peacock and commercial free during the racing every weekend here on Peacock as well. All right, that's it for round one. This is the KTM Fox Raceway National Pro Motocross rolls up the road to Northern California next week. Lawrence Brothers have done it. They swept both classes in their first shot racing the two different classes. Will that continue as the summer goes on? We'll find out at Hangtown next weekend. For James Stewart and Jason Thomas, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching the SMX Insider post-race show. We'll see you next weekend, but for now, congrats to Hunter and Jen.